Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the Red Strings Club. Are you ready for a quiz? Did you study? I hope you didn't just have a stress dream about it being the last day of the semester and not having your final project done and not being ready for the final exam. <laughs> By the way, those don't go away. Uh, my source for that information is me! My most recent one was last week. <sighs> so what's her top priority? It's finding Yana Septis, one of the executives that we worked on during a Kara sequence. Doesn't know about the mirror neuron algorithm. Is she capable of betraying Supercontinent? No, she seems pretty loyal. And she would definitely, definitely cover up a murder for them. She might not do the dirty work herself, but she absolutely showed up and made a, a, a pretty transparent death threat against Donovan. Uh, we are not sure about whether or not she believes SPW is a good thing or not, but we're going to opt to say yes. And then, this question. This harkens back to what she was saying about the terms of service. Do they have the right to modify them? And so, personally, I'm going to hedge towards no. Once you purchase it, it's... It should not be modifiable. This is a thing that is inside your body, controlling functions of your mind. Terms of service agreements tend to not hold up in court. Though who knows how long that's going to stay the case. We're not in the Red Strings Club universe yet. But I can see it on the horizon. <laughs> oh, something else has been on my mind for a bit. Uh, it's the exchange between Donovan and Diana. Oh, we get another short-term memory resetter. It, it's it was the bit about antidepressants, which I couldn't follow up on because I was off on some other tangent. So, uh, Jordi DeBacco, Deconstruct Team's founder, uh, gave this interview a while back about how he had some depressed family members who got started on antidepressants, which led to him wondering whether or not that made them somehow fundamentally different people. And I don't think there was an implication in that statement that, like, if they were fundamentally different, that was necessarily a bad thing. He just wondered whether or not some ineffable quality about them had been altered to make them different. And this game became an outlet for him to explore that idea. When I first read that, that was raising my hackles a little bit, but he went on to clarify that he doesn't necessarily think that that's a bad thing, and he's not, like, anti-antidepressant, which, thank God... Because that line of thought in the past has often led to people uh, claiming mental health medications are bad because they change you. But that specific change is removing or eroding a barrier to living a full, fulfilling, content life. If you need an antidepressant because you're, you know, depressed, talk to your doctor about going on an antidepressant. It's not something to be terrified of. You're not going to be less you. Uh, in the words of a show that makes me feel so ridiculously seen. Antidepressants are so not a big deal. Big whoop, you an antidepressant. Take two with or without a meal. Oh yeah, and we're going to take her knowledge instead of her determination. This isn't a huge choice like you would think, but uh, it does play into some later sequences. Also, I love this this little ritual they have uh, for putting Ariadne to rest. Also, their character designs, which you don't get to see that much of throughout the game.
Uh, about the antidepressants, yeah, give it a month or two, see how you feel, and if it's not working out, try another one if you need it. It can take two to four before you find one that clicks, and that's speaking from experience again. Uh, and now we're going to give Brandi a task. Investigate the CEO, find the COO, or we can look for the director of the mirror neuron algorithm, which... I was looking to see if we could open up the notebook from here, but alas. That is still one of the major things that we need to find out. We know very little at this point about the mirror neuron algorithm, so he's going to look into that for us. Uh, there are three different routes to go down to uh, find the director of that and bring him in. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah! He has his own aura. I've heard you craft drinks based on emotions. Oh, ghost, yeah. So odd. Happen to be a dealer of sorts. I can get you whatever you wish for. Only rules are no weapons, no living things. Hey, an ethical smuggler. Good stuff his ridiculously ominous theme. Money is overrated in this city. So let's make him a drink. And the only thing that we can think to exploit is this. Non Paradisi. Yeah, let's try a little of this. Uh, and in the meantime, where was I going with that thought? Because there was another point I wanted to make on the antidepressant line of thinking. Like, even if you only have occasional issues and you don't have um, like a mental health disorder it's still worth talking to a therapist every now and then get you some healthy coping strategies learn more about self care learn how to break down cognitive distortions before they become a problem don't wait until things go really dark before you start doing that again from experience that's a bad plan Ooh, and now we're getting introduced to a new bartending mechanic. <laughs> the shaker. For when you need more room in the glass. This is a means by which you can combine ingredients. So we're going to fill it half up with bourbon, half up with absinthe. That way the circle will go towards the soul disc in the upper left. Sorry, you get... Oh, whoops. Oh, I forget how this works. And I've spilled a little bit of absinthe. Sorry, uh, just to finish that point, that attitude drives me fucking crazy. Uh, about, like, the anti-antidepressant crusade. I'm glad the game interrogates it, though. Uh, and that it offers a point and counterpoint up. This is quite effective at moving the circle. Perfect. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's got telekinetic powers, apparently. Did you see the glass just float into his hand? It's really unclear the degree to which magic exists in this world. Because Donovan's very into the mysticism of this whole thing, and it's not clear whether or not that's a thing. But Ghost here sure does make it seem like there's actual literal magic going on. And now Donovan's trying to source two new exotic spirits from him. The old owner of the Red Strings Club used to have these two bottles handy, but he's since run out and haven't and hasn't been able to restock. So Ghost, in exchange for that delicious cocktail that we mixed for him, or for them, is gonna get us some. That was a bit intense. Quiz time then? No. I can't. I was unable to read the subject. Who is he? Oh, and since we just got some more 
complicated bartending mechanics. I love saying that. It's so nifty that this is a mode of gameplay. I just think it's neat. <laughs> The story of how uh, the Red Strings Club came to be actually ties into this. And it's really interesting because almost four years before this game came out, they released Gods Will Be Watching. Uh, and then they went on to cancel two of their of their big games that were in development. Uh, two in a row, plus some other smaller projects too. And they didn't have much money to keep the studio going aside from the legs from uh, their first game. What they did have was a lot of prototypes that they came up with for various game jams. Oh, Larissa! Larissa, the supercontinent uh, marketer. Oh, yeah! She rules. She is the horniest human being on Earth. Yeah, Larissa! Hell yeah. So what they did was uh, they had a they had a lot of prototypes is what they had that they had come up with for all these game jams and instead of just running with one of them and fleshing one out they made a gumbo out of a bunch of them and one of them was <laughs> one of them was about pottery one of them was about bartending and one of them heavily featured another mechanic uh that if I talk about it, it's actually going to spoil something we'll see later. And so after a lot of brainstorming, the common thread they found was all of their mechanics were about manipulating people, and that dovetailed into the direction they decided to go with for the story. Oh, and now we're going to have a nice long chat with Larissa who is quite forthcoming with a lot of information that we need. And we're going to make use of this new mixing, uh, this new shaker mechanic that we got. This club is haunted. I'm a prisoner of the red strings. That carries a lot more weight as a, as a sentence or as a thing that he believes after the meeting with Ghost. And yeah, it does seem kind of magical the way we are weaving the red strings in our cocktail mixing. She is so horny. <laughs> it's great. I love to see your magic at work, but you always end up getting me horny and I spill everything you want to know. So here's the deal. You can ask me whatever you want, but before each question you have to serve me a drink. And you can't repeat. So, now that she's divulged to us that she's most talkative when she's horny, which to be fair is often, it's her default state, uh, whatever our most pressing question is should be the one uh, that comes right after we have served her something that... Oops. something that will bring that horniness out. We want her as horny on main as possible. So we're going for the lust. So right and down. Oh, come on. And now we shake the, uh, the problem that I was running into earlier is that I was keeping the mouse button held down while shaking. Which is what was causing it to spill out. Now we only need a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. That should be good. Get the ice. Ah, oh, shit. Um... Is this, no, wait, no. Is this gonna work if we just pour a little bit out? Hell yeah. There's an achievement for never spilling a drop. You sensual son of a bitch. Now you've got me all wet. So, what do we want to ask her when we know she's going to be the most forthcoming? Uh, there's the COO situation, but we're going to go a different direction. We're going to ask 
about their marketing because that's what she is best with. Their marketing of the Akara androids in particular. Excuse me, I am not a robot. That's exactly what a robot would say. <laughs> I love that. So now I'm cute with those innocent questions dripping with poison. So she's been working on SBW too. They are going to make the Akara models hireable for some corporate clients, like health resorts or luxury bartenders. Since they're specialized in counseling, hiring them as uh, human resource managers, that's another route they could go. And she wants to tell us more. She gets really talkative. Do you know Dr. Edgar Coldstream? You should, he's the creator of Akara. Yeah, sounds like a guy I'd love to meet. I'll tell him to come by. Hell yeah. He is the person that Diana, uh, I think, I think the question was idolizes or was her mentor or something to that extent. Uh, he's the answer to that one. But since we didn't talk to Diana about Edgar Coldstream, uh, we couldn't have answered that question correctly, even if we wanted to. Even if you know the answer to the question from outside the game. Okay, so next up... New question, new cocktail. Make sure it's nice and mixed. Good, good, good! Ah, it's a little far, we might... Oh no, we don't have to pour any of it out. Hey, that's really generous. Yeah, she... Shocker, she loves the Euphoria drink. Shoot before this beautiful rush vanishes. Let's ask about how they're going to market social psyche welfare. How are they going to convince people to adopt this? It's about to be released just a couple of weeks away. So now we finally get an answer to that question. We tried to bluff that with Naima, but she didn't really reveal all that much. Now we have madness or depression. And since we're going to be hitting both of those notes, let's start with madness. And fill her up. That looks kind of tasty, actually. I'm shocked by how good, like, the pixel art liquid physics are in this. Wait, what? Oh, I must have accidentally poured both left and right into uh, the bottle. I think that's tequila and absinthe. And then the white one should be vodka, I think? Oops. No, we want to get the bourbon. The bourbon and the absinthe. Yeah, get that nice amber piss color going. Mmm, tasty cocktail. We're gonna drive her mad with our piss cocktail. Aw, oh, come on. Really? I might have to re-pour this, because it's really hard to get ice out of the glass. Okay. Luckily, we still have a lot left over. And a little more, a little more. Oh, too far. A little ice should do it. Serve that up. And we have two questions left. What an arresting drink. Makes me think of how we identify with our clothes and words, but they're not quite us as an identity. In the same way, we're not our dress, we're not our feet, we're not our belly buttons. We're not any of those particularities, but the sum of the whole. 
Same way my shoes aren't me, other people aren't me either. And you aren't me. So shoes, dress, toes, lipstick, blah, blah, blah. Together aren't me. Are me. We could say that you're me too. Yeah, she goes off. <laughs> what about the new CEO? Many witches in the past have used mirrors and balls for scrying. But I tell you, Fate Mancer, the best surface in which to spy the future is one of your cocktails. I don't know which of these is going to get me dialogue, so hey. The present is fake, you fool. You're not worthy of my scrying then. Cast off the spell. So we got nothing out of that. Um, full disclosure, you don't get that much more information out of the last two questions anyway. So vodka and absinthe. Oh, that sounds like a tasty combination. The only time I've ever had absinthe was when I was already really drunk. And that's kind of the only reason why I had absinthe. Because if I had been sober... Uh, when the bartender at this bar crawl told me that the two shots of absinthe I ordered were like $50 or something, I would have not had absinthe that night. But by the point I had gotten there and ordered those two shots, I was already numb and unable to feel my body anyway. And I was definitely not up for the task of processing things like money. <laughs> Are you aware of Johanna? Yes, you're celebrating she's lost now, aren't you? I would never rejoice in personal misery. Despise corporations, not people. So something bad has happened to Johanna. Again, this is kind of our fault. She's lost her mind. Last time... Oh, by the way, trigger warning coming up for self-harm and suicide. Uh, she had a mental breakdown in the offices, an ambulance took her away, but apparently she broke out from it and is now missing. We've heard reports of her wandering around the city armed with a gun. Caught her on some security footage standing over Northbridge's railing. She was holding the gun against her temple. Yeah. Because of our meddling, our manipulation, when we were playing in the Akara sequence, this woman's been driven to the verge of suicide. Woof. You've completely killed my buzz here. I need to go out and get some air. Her first night out in three days. Her hedonic treadmill is all downhill. <laughs> Yeah, now we have one more quiz. This one is really important to pass. Like, vital. What's her greatest passion? You know, for as horny as she is, she's much hornier for marketing. Does she wear implants? Not that we know of. Does she like Johanna Seftis? Yeah, of course. Does she agree with social psyche welfare? She didn't seem to care. And she is most loyal to herself. Of all our emotions, what is her predominant... Oh, yeah, yeah, this is the horny one. Predominantly horny. Uh, and she loves tequila. Is she compassionate? Yeah. We can suss that out. If we stopped SBW, she would only be upset because it would affect her marketing of it. And finally, the tenth question, always the opinion question, is marketing evil?
It depends. Marketing, marketing can be done ethically. Nothing wrong about it. It's our responsibility to think critically. Yes, it attacks our personal autonomy and our right to self-determination. I think out of the three, the first one is closer to where I fall. It's propagandistic and to some pretty nefarious ends. But Akar brings up an interesting counterpoint. Merely existing can't be compared with distributing propaganda. A street-level conversation doesn't have the same impact as a carefully produced, widely broadcast distortion of reality. Such scale entails responsibility, and marketing is persuasion, influencing people to buy things and ideas. Are literature, cinema, and music inherently evil, too? I count them as carefully produced distortions of reality with the power to change minds. Yeah, but the problem is the substance. Art doesn't inherently want to persuade you into consumerism, while marketing is nothing but that. I really like that final line of questioning for this one. And the reason it was so important uh, to get at least 7 out of 10 there is because this time our reward isn't going to be another amnesia pill. <laughs> I love you. Wow, wasn't expecting to ever hear that from you. Is there a problem? No, I like you too. Uh, what about the quiz results? Yeah, we got 10 out of 10. Good. Not a what, but a who is what we won. He's about to come through the door. Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Oh, this shithead! This absolute bastard, man! Okay, my favorite scene of the game is now coming up. It is imminent. But that's gonna have to be next time. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.